Now we are on the way with just out and about and him to the cheese. He, he hid from me again to the train shop. Put our mask on, stay safe. Ain't it right? That's right. Gotta stay safe. So here we are on the way. Check this out. We are behind the scenes, as you can see. Look, we're behind the gates. Look where we're at. Back at the train shop. And look, sitting over there. There's Cinderella. What we have here, this is our 1938 locomotive. Uh, number 70 was built for the White Bass and Yukon Railroad in Alaska. Uh, she's been here since 77. And she's been running since 87. Uh, she's the second one. The first one didn't die, you'll see it just a little bit. Uh, what they're doing here is getting the fire ready for the day. Our train still hand fired coal. Uh, just the way it was when it was built. And probably the way it'll be for a long time, hopefully. But uh, I know coal was kind of dirty and nasty, but it's cheaper than oil right now. So. But um, what uh, the guys are actually what they're doing is changing the fire. We have a fire that burns all night to keep it fired up, and they'll dump all that out and build a fresh fire. So that engine operates at 205 psi. It weighs uh, 125 tons. So uh, it will uh, it will pull about twice as many train cars. Load. Yeah, it's very powerful. <laughs> but uh, the gauge of the track here is three feet. It's what they call narrow gauge. And. Uh, Standard gauge railroads run through your hometown, they're four foot eight and a half. The narrow gauge is built for the mountain track. They are able to make sharper turns and required less of a right of way to make those turns. So, like the curve, our tightest curve here is 24 degrees. Uh, standard gauge railroad, the tight curve is like 12 degrees. So, and our grade here. Uh, Five and a half percent. Anybody knows anything about trains? The steep grade on the railroad is considered one, one and a half percent. But uh, here it's five and a half. It's typical of narrow gauge railroads. Uh, narrow gauges were built all around the mountain areas. Most famous is in Colorado, the Denver Rio Grande, which is now Durango and Silver. So, uh, the East Broad Top, the Tweetsie, that ran from Johnson City to Boone. It was narrow gauge. So, but uh, this is the original ride here. It was the track was laid in '61, and they opened up with 192, which is inside getting rebuilt. Uh, it ran the Rebel Railroad until the mid '60s, and they changed it to uh, Gold Rush Junction, then Silver Dollar City, then Dollywood. So, uh, it's also the inch is also from the white pass. But uh, it was built 43, well this was 38. So I remember Silver Dollar City. Here then. Do what? I remember Silver Dollar City. But uh, this used to be the all all the maintenance shop for Dollywood. Wow. Before before it blew up to a big park, mega park. Now we're just a little blip on the radar. <laughs> We're still one of the more popular rides. Um, we usually end up eighth or ninth in capacity for the year. But everybody can ride the train, or not everybody can ride the roller coaster. Yeah. Our business time is October, November, and December when we have um, uh, gospel groups here and all that. A lot of the retired folks come and want to ride the steam train in the Christmas season. Yeah. But, um, what they're doing out there is they're actually cleaning the ashes out. And here in a little bit they'll start loading some coal in the tender. So, but so that engine out there will burn, boil through around 5,000 gallons of water a day. And it'll burn three tons of coal every day. Every day. Every day.
every day is running at least at least three times. Sometimes four. Depends on how busy. With COVID, our loads are lighter, so the engines are not too much cold. Keep going. How do you load the coal in? Traction. What you just like shovel it in? Oh no, tractor has a bucket on the front. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. That's no, what no. I'm trying to imagine. No, later. coal's actually coal pile's actually down there. Okay. Shovel it and shovel it in the wind. Yeah, roughly, yeah. There's a little bit bigger. What was the question? What was the question? I wrote a train in Chattanooga. It was new about Chattanooga. It had this thing at 263. Yeah, Thursday. Thursday was super. I'm holding the train, turn it around, and then you go, and then you hook up from the rear end to go forward again. Now, ours can do, well, we have basically our track is two loops on either end, so you can run this train any direction you want. You know, go through the loops any direction you want. But uh, the lower loop, you go around this way. Used to, they went around this way, and uh, they wanted the engine out front for the pitchers, and so it makes it a harder pull getting out of the deep zone. But used to, they come all the way around here and got the speed up, and went up right up to the upper loop. Same. We're getting ready to start cold, so we'll move over here. I'll show you. Hey, we made a shot. It's fun when the train gets stuck, too. Oh, no. Right. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. 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 Um, it's a optical loop. 
This one's bigger. It's longer. And it's taller. But, that one's heavier. That one's about 20 tons heavier than this one. Wow. Yeah, and uh, this engine has big drive wheels, 48 inches, where that one has 45. Uh, the taller the wheel is, the more speed it's designed to run. This engine is made to get up and go. That one is made to pull these mountains. Why is that one so much heavier when it's made out of? What? Why is that one so much heavier when it's made out of? It's just uh, the boiler is uh, four inches in diameter thicker. Around to get more pressure. The frame, speed. the frame is like twice as thick okay. as the drive wheel. One of these drive wheels, the center drive wheel right here, weighs eight thousand pounds. Yeah. So is that because it's built for more speed? What? Is that because it's built for more speed? Which, what's your question? Which is why? Why the thicker um, engine casing? That one's built for pull. The heavier the engine, that engine's built to pull, heel. This one, this one was built, this was actually an army engine. It was built during World War II. They built 700 of them to go overseas. To like Philippines and India and Iraq and Iran. Well, there was a shortage of narrow gauge engines in Alaska. And so the army had 11 of them shipped to Alaska instead of overseas and this is the third so uh have you ever heard of tweetsie railroad yeah they yep. have 190 they have the original okay it's the twin sister to this one. oh wow 191 192 yeah. so right here that's the brake right there yes so each of the driving wheels well, they're all tied together as one. Cast iron. 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 Cast so how, how often do you have to change the brake? Uh, it's usually last about two months. Is that all? Yeah. Wow. Well, we, you know, we put a lot of miles. We put a lot of miles up here, miles and down here, miles. So. Wow. Now, are the brakes what kind of cream also? No, they're air power. Air power. Yeah, air, it, the whole machine is independently operated. But it, it'll produce its own electricity and it'll produce air brake, air, compressed air. So the light can run the light can make the the on the rest of the train that's powered by this. No, no the coaches have batteries. You know, the engine has separate electrical systems. Well, we have to do that by technically by law in case the engine must become separated. The engine has to have its own lighting independent of the rear behind. No question. Okay. What's the top speed that can make? We take probably about 40-45 miles an hour. Not here though. Uh, here about 15 is about as fast as you want to go. And there's not many places you can do that safely. What if we challenge you really hard? <laughs> what if all of us challenge you? No. Go over there? <laughs> no. Nope. No. These things will flip over if you get them too fast. Really fast. Because of narrow gauge. Yeah, well, not just narrow gauge, I mean, you get going too fast. These machines are top heavy. So, if it flips over, the motor will burn. Everybody knows that. So, how long have you been that? 24 years. 44 years? 24. Oh, 24. So you were interested in change a long time ago? Yes, it was. <laughs> this one will be out in about a month. Probably. So we have two of them Yeah, they have two of them. When this one comes out, does that one, when this one goes out, does that one come in? That will come in for a little while. Then we'll go back into our normal rotation, which is about once a month. Uh, 
This one was, well, that one was rebuilt two years ago. And we held off doing this one a year. Because basically we didn't want to do it right again. But once this is done, we don't have to do this again for 10 years or eight years. So it's a big job. I mean, it took, actually, if it wasn't for the COVID, the shutdown, before they furloughed us, we was able to bring the group back in here instead of operating. We put everybody on this engine for about two or three weeks and brought us to this point, you know, a lot quicker. Because uh, the, the group in here, we operate and maintain. You know, the conductors are just the operate, the ride operators, but the maintenance department actually operates the engine. What's her name? Huh? What's her name? Kim. That one Kim. Oh, Quondike Katie. Oh, that's Quondike Katie. Yeah. That's Katie. Who named it? It was named before it got here. Yeah. Well, you know, it'll have its name all at this time, too, like that. Uh, Kim Kim. Yeah. 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 Do I? I'd never known they had names. They have, about every one of them has a nickname. Yeah. Here the nicknames are more prominent than the numbers. So for years when I got here, they're like, which one's right? I'd say 192, which one's that? And that's like, oh, yeah. But, uh, what makes the, I don't know what it's called, the thing that makes the tubing sound? The whistle? The whistle, thank you. How does that? It's just, it's stained. It's just steam and it's just, okay. Uh, and there's, we have several different whistles that make a different sound. So some are deeper, some are louder, and shriller. You know, they, so you have, change it out for like the holidays, and we change it out once in a while. Okay. You know, is it skilled to make it sound a certain way? Yes. Okay. Yes, that that's all in the individual engineer. Okay. They have their own unique sound. Ah, so like back in the day, could like. You figure out who was doing the okay. Yeah. Uh, most of the people that have worked here for a long time know which one of us is running the engine. Okay. Sound That's cool. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we have like three or four different whistles we rotate on the engine. So. Uh, Y'all got questions? I mean, this this is. I can probably answer anything you want to know about it. Y'all repainting that back there too? Yes, yes. Uh, we can't paint it unless uh, we have to bring it over here in the light and paint it. Yeah. <coughs> Actually, the driving wheels were just put in Monday and Tuesday. So if you come in here last week, you'd have seen him sitting in the middle of the floor. Spent two days putting him up in the engine. So. I got like a hoist, a hoist up to get him on. Well, we have a jack, hydraulic jack in the fist. Okay. That uh, right. We take the track out underneath and raise them up in there. Doesn't take long. You just put one up an hour. What's the hardest thing that you have to do? The hardest. Yes. 
Yes, uh, I did it. I've done it since I was at Appalachian State. Um, I started working at Tweetsie there. And I stayed there instead of going back to school. <laughs> but, uh, I enjoyed it. They have a similar uh, operation as far as training. The rest of us too. We like Tweetsie too. That Tweetsie actually built this originally. Really? They originally built, this was their franchise park, and they sold it off in the 60s when they were developing uh, Beach Mountain and all that. Built the Land of Oz and the Speech Slope. We were just at the Land of Oz Friday. Oh, was last, it open? Last Friday. Huh. We had a private tour. They're not open yet. Oh. I, They're not able to open yet. I've been up for a long time, but mine wasn't a private tour. Yeah. Mine wasn't a scheduled tour at all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I knew somebody, knew somebody, oh. so we went up there in the summer day and walked the Land of Oz. It's beautiful. Yeah, I never got to go to it as a kid. I went to it as a kid. It was super freaky scary. <laughs> that's what, moving, I, man. That that's was what I heard. <laughs> but, uh, I think it's neat. I keep wanting to go over there. But living over here, I don't hear about when they're open. So yeah. But, uh, who gets the joy of shoveling the coal? <laughs> fire and you have to, you have to fire for one year before you get to learn to run. And to learn to run takes about three years. You know, and, uh, uh, so like a lot of the, the other rides here, there's two divisions that control the rides. There's the maintenance side, and there's another traction side, operation. Uh, if you go ride a roller coaster or other ride, what you're seeing is uh, the frontline host is the operation host that's operating the ride. And there's a maintenance man or two hanging down around. the floor below. You don't see you. Yeah. Well, with the train, not like that. The maintenance men are actually running the engine. It's because to operate that engine is so complex that you can't just bring somebody in and throw them up there and operate it. There's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. You know, there's no PLC on that. It's all manual. So the person who's running it has to have a complete knowledge, yeah. a comfortable knowledge of the operation of the engine. Be ready for anything because some there's Ooh. things that happen. Turn yours off so Brake, I can do it. Chew, brakes might not go on, or you know, turn yours off. when that happens, well, y'all gotta slow down the engine somehow. Turn yours well, we off. can. Yeah. There's ways of doing it without the brake. Yeah. Um, just saying, there's yeah. all kinds of scenarios that can go right. I got you. wrong. What's PLC mean? That's that computer thing they got on there. <laughs> all the, all the, they call it. I don't know exactly what it means, but all the rides have a PLC, but this one, you know, because this is weird 1940s technology. All the rest of the rides are built, probably, all the rest of the rides have a computer control system that, can, that has those readouts. This thing's completely manual operation. Try to get it once a month. You know, sometimes we may, like Christmas, we may pick one of them because we got to put lights on it instead of having to decorate both of them. You know, but uh, usually we run that one at Christmas because it it likes the slow speed. But I think this year we're going to run this one for Christmas. Kings Island actually runs both of their trains for Christmas. Who? Kings Island. Yeah, we don't yeah. we don't have enough cars. Yeah. What you see is what we got. Right. We got seven cars, and that's it. And uh, so we don't. There's times you might see both engines fired up. Yeah. It's not very long, period. You said the fire was in there all night. Do you have to fire it at all, or can you put it to bed when you bring it in? We build. We put a sizable pile of coal 
in the firebox after the last run, and we fill the boiler up with water, and that coal will burn all night long. The next morning they come in, dump all their ashes, and that pile of coal is the start of your fire the next day. Now, if we're not going to run, if we're going to be closed for multiple days in a row, we we'll let the fire die. And then we'll fire it back up the night or two, the day before that morning. And if it's completely cold, never not been run, you're looking about eight hours from, start, from starting the fire to being able to operate it. So, that's one thing that a lot of people want. Takes the management of the park to understand. Seventy goes down. Well, you still you're looking at a half a day for one of two to be running. You know, they don't. They think they don't realize that there's a, a whole process that has to go through to get the engine up and running. And we don't want to keep it. It costs a lot of money just to keep it sitting here, right. steamed up, not running. So. But every day it's fired up, it's a ton of coal. You just waste them to keep it hot. So, so how long on a normal day? How long on a normal day does it take to get it ready? To hour and a half. Hour and a half. Depends on the people. Depends on. Depends on how good you're managing your time. A couple people get it ready for an hour and a half. How reliable are they? Huh? How reliable are they? Uh, we have each engine has its quirks, but uh, they're pretty reliable. I mean, we had a broke spring on safety this week. That's the first one we broke in five years, so that's to me not a big deal. What broke? Yeah. A spring. A spring. Do you have to make some of your own part, or can you find them somewhere? Um, certain things we can make here. Certain things we have to have made. Um, like uh, we can make the bushings for the rods. They're uh, a bronze, a 660 bearing bronze. We can machine them out here and press them in and throw them on. But if it gets into uh, like making that wheel set sitting behind you, pressing it on and all that, no, we can't do that. We have to shop it out. We have another shop. Y'all ever have to get in the, the bowler? Oh, yeah. How do you get in there? Well, can't see it right now, but the steam dome is right behind that post. Yeah. And there's a cap up there. And if you're small enough, you can squeeze down through the, around the throttle and get down in there. The last year we had the tubes out of it and the two sheets out of it. And I crawled from the front to the rear. That's something that probably won't ever happen again for a long time. <laughs> it's pretty impressive, but it'll be a problem one into the other. You know? mm -hmm. But uh, when she comes out, she's going to be about brand new. In as good a shape as she's been in in 10, 12 years. And that's that one you that one you pay close attention over here at knocking and clicking and all that. So that's four years. Running hard, yeah. You know that's our work. That one's our workhorse. You know, so it's going to get a running gear repair this winter. We have to do that about every four or five years, just to keep. It. About how much does that cost? Fifty-six thousand dollars. Depends on how much we can do in house. We try to do as much as we can, but. A lot of the stuff we can't do, which on the machines to do. Yeah. So. Do the passenger cars come from here and you rebuild them? The passenger mm -hmm. cars were originally mm -hmm. coal cars from the East Rock Top Railroad in you know, Pennsylvania. So, uh, uh, they've been, the, the cars have always been here. They were a different design in the 60s, 70s, and 80s from what Dollywood has now, but the bottom and base frame is the same old thing. If you can look under them, you can actually see where the chutes were. 
You have to see where the coal chutes were underneath the car. Yeah. So. With everything you do, this position, what's your favorite thing to do here? Operate. Like to take them out and operate. That's the fun part of the whole thing. You know, I don't, I, me as the foreman or the lead, uh, I don't get to go out and run them as much as I used to. I used to run five days a week. And now it's one day a week, maybe a trip or two here and there. Yeah. So it, I enjoy that. Yeah. I enjoy my day on the engine. You know, uh, that's the most enjoyable part. Is actually getting to run it. Now, getting to run this out of the shop brand new, that's going to be a nice trip. <laughs> you know, you know, so, but, uh, we're trying to keep, not, we're trying to keep her a little bit hidden. I mean, right now ain't nothing. We're trying to keep her a little bit hidden until we're done. Yeah. Because uh, we don't want to be a little surprised for everybody how good it's going to look and all that. So. That'll be exciting. Yeah, so uh, we may, we're not even, we're not even going to have it out tested while the park so We're probably not going to test it until the park closes on the 10th of August. So we do all the testing and everything with nobody here. And then uh, put it on another week, another few days after that. Uh, everybody will hear about it when it's out, I'm sure. <laughs> so. Does the, does the heat surround the tank or does it just hit from the one end and transfer? Uh, there's a, uh, You got the fire, the black jacket is surround. That's the boiler. Everything you see, it's gloss black is the boiler. What there is is two inch insulation under that sheet metal. And then you got the actual riveted barrel boiler. Well, what this is called a fire tube boiler. In the back of the engine, you got the fire box. And you got a tube sheet. And the water surrounds that fire box and the tubes. So the fire goes through those tubes when you're running it. That's where you get your heat. This is called a fire tube boiler. Some of them may have water tube boilers where the water is actually in the tube and the fire surrounds the tube and makes steam. But these have always been fire tube boilers. And believe it or not, the fire will actually go all the way to the front. When it's pulling, the flames will go all the way through the boiler up to the front. Yeah. I give you when you ride it at night, you see the You see the fire. You'll see the embers coming out. Yeah. You see the orange embers popping out of it at night. That's right. Yeah. I think they're going to have you all for a train ride at eleven. Yeah. Um, so I need to check on them and see how we make some adjustments. Seven. If y'all want to start making your way to the depot, you can do it. and uh, that'll be over there at the engine probably in <coughs> 10 to 12 minutes. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am not the very well. What did that conductance to? That was, uh, I think it was the name of the railroad when this place was. It was the late days of the gold dust bench or the early days of the silver dollar. Uh, instead of calling it the Silver Dollar City Railroad, mm -hmm. they could call it the Iron Mountain Railroad. Mm -hmm. Well, they repainted a couple of years ago. We tried, we tried to get them to change the dollar with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. oh, wait, I mean, we fought them on it. Well, they keep asking that. Yeah, I mean, they're like, why well, don't you try to paint it? They don't tire them. So. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. So you said there's going to be running in. All right, got an inside look at the uh, train shop. Let's see, getting Cinderella still ready. We're gonna head over to the depot and get ready to get on and take a ride. Yeah. Well, y'all notice something missing here. Train cars are here, but no engine. 
Cinderella will be here in just a minute. Doing good. How are you this morning? Good Great job backing up. Hey, we tried. <laughs> I promise you, it's a lot cooler going up. Oh, okay, got the train backed up, got a hitch together. Time to go get on. Let's go ride. 